What's up guys? It's your boy Nick Davis with 239 Plies and today we are going to tie the Mega Lollipop HD, the revised version. Uh, we did this video before but we made a few changes and uh, we're going to do it again. Uh, this is a great fly for baby tarpon as well as snook and redfish and anything that's going to eat a finger mullet profile fly. Uh, pushes a lot of water, really simple, easy, go-to pattern. Tie it in a variety of different colors. It's going to look good. It's easy to tie. Um, and with the materials that we're going to tie it with, we're also going to be able to tie uh, two or three other you know, similar patterns for a little bit different applications. So uh, without further ado, let's get tying. We're going to tie, we're going to tie it today on a Tiemco 600 SP size one. You can tie this on any hook. It's not it's not exclusive to one hook or the other. I just, this fly is going in my box and I'm gonna throw this at tarpon, so I'm gonna use my favorite tarpon hook. So, and yeah, this is going in my fly box, Pat. Not yours, not Nick's, mine. So, uh, we'll get going here. These hooks are a little pricey, but I feel they're worth it. You could just as easily tie this on a Daiichi 2546 size two for redfish or for you know, snook or even small tarpon. So let's start with, I swear these hooks are made with pistachios and printer ink. It's the only way to justify their price. But anyway, start with some red cactus chenille. And we're gonna advance the hook just to the barb of the hook, just a little bit past that. And then just wrap until the hook straightens out. And four or five wraps at the most. This is gonna be our impressionistic gills underlying bleeding gills like every lure you've ever picked up ever but we're not throwing lures we're throwing flies next we're going to use some mason hard mono 40. this is a an optional step but it works really well uh, i encourage you to incorporate this into the fly it's just a, a mono loop to help keep the rabbit from fouling around the hook shank. It's not a necessity to work this in, but it is definitely encouraged. And we're just gonna flatten one side of it, help us tie it in, and we're gonna make sure that we tie it in with the curve of the mono going directly down the hook shank. So when you look down it, it should be directly in line. And that's important for the next step. Secure that. Next, we're gonna grab our bunny strip. We're gonna find a nice section of it. Take the second, grab a razor blade and cut it from the hide side down. And you see you have that nice, lovely taper in the fur still. Flatten this puppy out a little bit. Oof, it's looking good. Prepped and pretty. Hold it down and we're gonna tie it in right at the first black bar, right where the yellow disappears and you start on the green. We're gonna give that a few wraps to hold it in place. Then we're gonna pull this rabbit strip over. And we're gonna find a section about an inch up the hide. And we're gonna take our scissor points and we're gonna put a hole in it about an inch up the hide, right where it's tied in. You see that there? Right there. It goes all the way through the hide. Try this again. Ah! Success. Pull this back. And now you see this rabbit strip is connected to the monofilament. You're going to pull this flat to where the mono loop, its apex, is where it's tied in at. Otherwise, it's not here, it's not, you don't have more on top or the bottom. The longest point is where it goes through the leather of the strap. 
You're gonna lay it down flat on top of the hook shank. And that's why it was important to line it up with the hook shank because if it was curved off to the side when you lay it down, this hide's gonna go over here or over here or whichever way the curve's going. And that's, it's not gonna be good. We want this fly to swim straight in the water. Now you can see that that's on there nice. Give that a few wraps around. Bam. Trim that down. Come in here, trim that up. Try to get rid of this as much as you can. Because you don't have to go too crazy. We're going to cover over it. Wrap all that down. Nice. All right. Next, we're going to use our Palmer chenille or polar chenille. Whichever you got. Both do the same thing. And it's just flash that doesn't foul. I like using a polar chenille or Palmer chenille just because, you know, a crystal flash or, or polar flash or any of the other types of like long strand fiber flashes. Um, you know, they're light, they don't have a lot of stiffness to them, and they will foul around the hook if you look at them wrong. So we can. We can take this type of chenille, a Palmer chenille or a Polar chenille, and wrap it around the hook shank and create the appearance we're looking for and the performance that we're looking for. So we'll just keep going around here like this. And we're just going to cover over that just a little bit. Create a nice little ramp again. And now we're ready to go there. Chartreuse Arctic Fox. We're going to take just a little bit, about that much. So we're going to take this little bit, flatten it out like such, turn your hook over, and we're going to lay it down so we've got about an inch, maybe just a tad bit over an inch. Divide it on either side of the hook and tie it in. You can look, look at it, look back at it. Make sure it's covering the bottom half of the hook. And it is. I'm pulling out the guard hairs just because I really don't want all of them in there. You know, they're longer, they're wispier. I'm trying to take out as many elements of this fly that could foul around the hook as possible. And they're really not offering anything in the way of, of appearance for this fly or performance. So we will just get rid of them. We're going to use a nice tapered under fur. Now let's clean this up. And I like to do this top and bottom trim at the same time because that way you can trim, trim it all. At the same time, get it uniform around the hook shank, which helps you if you're tying, um, you know, anything on top of it, you're not going to have any crazy, any crazy humps. All right, next we're going to use our medium bead chain, which of course I didn't like get that out ahead of time. That would be preparation and preparation would make this better. And we certainly don't want that. So let's take our scissors. Figure eight these in there. Take a little bit of zap gel. A little dot there. And you can use uh, the Loon hardhead if you want right here. Works well. And then you can have a few other options. All right, now we're ready for our yellow boxy brush. And we're just going to tie it in. all the way back to where the Arctic Fox starts. We're just going to wrap down that first section. This is getting a little bulky here, but it's okay because we're going to cover over it and it's going to give us a nice, nice profile because this stuff lays pretty flat and it doesn't, doesn't bunch up very much. So you don't have to really worry about this getting, you know, fluffy or too bulky. 
And just don't start palmering. Don't get cheap on me, all right? Use this thing a few times. You can usually wrap it six or seven times. We're going to trim it. And the thicker it's tied in, the more lush the head is tied in, the better the fly is going to look, the more durable it's going to be because the less thread is exposed, and the easier it's going to be to trim and make that nice, pretty profile. A few securing wraps. I'm going to use my, I want to use my doll scissors. Where are they at? There they are. Get that off right there. Slick all these fibers back. Secure them down and just give it a quick whip finish. We're going to come back. I'm going to come back. You don't have to come back if you don't want to, but I'm going to come back to it and we'll show you. Comb these out. Next, we're going to grab our double sided razor and just kind of trim these up. Trimming it back in a nice taper bullet like on the sides. Put a crimp in it. Get the bottom a little bit. And then we're just going to take a little bit off the top. Steep angle. Grab our scissors, come back in here and just get a few of these unruly guys that didn't want to cooperate. So I'm going to grab some red thread next. Just give it a quick once over. Quick once over with the red thread. Give it a nice little nose. You can use pink, you can use black, you can use any color, it doesn't matter. I like to use a little UV red. Loon hardhead, this stuff's cool and it's cheap and it lasts forever. Little dip in there. This is what I use too to make the, uh, the crustacean eyes. Got a video on that too if you wanna see how that's done. It's very technical. We'll just put it over here to dry in the meantime. It's pretty dried up. At least it's tacked up a little bit. Grab our UV flow. You can use thin as well. Give it a little hit there. A little zap of the light. Bomb proof, tarpon proof, Pat Rea proof.